Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this late breaking news for the last day of the conference. The news is about Nigerian Sat 2 and Sat X, the successful launch. And we want to share the story with you. Uh, this presentation is meant to be done by Mr. Francis Dubem Chizia, who is the project direct manager as well as the director of international corporations of the Nigerian Space Agency. Uh, unavoidably, he could not be here, and I feel honored and privileged to have been asked to do the presentation on his behalf. Um, to get started, let me figure out how to use the... Okay. Now, this presentation is non-technical. The essence is to share with you the story of the successful launch of the two satellites, as well as to share with you what we think is a great achievement for us. So because of the nature of the presentation, uh, I, will not, I may not be able to do justice to any technical questions you may have. But as in any project, this is a result of collaborative efforts between NASDAQ and SSTL of UK. So we have, among our midst, the lead engineer from the inception of the project, Andrew, who, should, in case you have any technical questions, he'll be glad to answer the questions, those questions for you. We also have Alex De Silva, who is also one of the key members of the project, as well as some other members of the project team from SSTL. Should, in case you have questions about applications of the data and utilizations, we are also privileged to have Dr. Shaba Halilu from NASDA who is the director of strat strategic space applications. Now, if your questions concern or has to do with how to get the data, then you can direct that to me. So I'm the one that will give you the data and collect your money. Just a joke. All right, quickly then, what we want to do is to highlight the Nigerian space program, because this is a story of the success, not necessarily technical. So we'll look at the background of how we came to be our plan, that is our roadmap for implementing the program, then we will look at specifically the project itself, Nigerian SAT-2 project, then the launching of the SAT-2, current status, that is, what are we doing now, the satellites and orbit, so we look at what we have done so far, what we have achieved since the launch. And then we show you some samples of the images that we have gotten so far. And then you may ask, so, so what? So we talk a little bit about the next steps. That is, what are we doing next? And we wrap it up with a conclusion. All right, highlights of this Nigerian Space Program. Nigerian Space Program was based on some national space policy. That is, the Nigerian government said, okay, we wanted to go into space, so there has to be a policy around it. So this policy was approved by the executive Council, Federal Executive Council of Nigeria in 2001. This council now, the, the space policy called for the establishment of a council called the National Space Council, and this council is shared by the president of the country. In addition to the council, there is also a high-powered technical advisory committee, which has the highest level of the government. As part of the policy, we want to make sure that we have strong international corporations. Now, we talk a little bit about the passing or the legal backing, how it got to be that it's only in 2009, 2010, excuse me, that uh, the legal backing was given to the agencies charged with the implementation of the, of the policy. Now, the policy statements, and I'm paraphrasing here, this is not the exact statement, but it's just a paraphrase. The first key thing we want to achieve is to vigorously pursue the attainment of space capabilities particularly as tools for our social development. Our concern is social development of our people, quality of life of our people. So our first priority then is to vigorously pursue that attainment, space capabilities. And how are we going to achieve that? Through scientific, economic, uh, educational development, design, manufacture, and applications of appropriate hardware, software, techniques, processes, procedures, and particularly human expertise in space technology. And this includes transport systems, satellite payloads, 
drug segments, or whatever we need to do to achieve the goal. Now, second part of that, or of, of, of our focus, is to make to ensure that we foster international corporations. This is really key, because we know we, where we are coming from, where we started from, and there's nothing we could do on our own. And of course, nobody does anything by themselves. Okay. All right. So what is the trust of the policy then? That is, in summary, the first cardinal pillar of the policy is the development of human resources and capacity. You can have all the hardware. If you don't have, the, you can buy hardware, you can buy all, everything here and there. But if you don't have the human capacity, you can't go anywhere. So the first thing we want to be sure of is we develop our capacity, the human expertise. Then we want to use this expertise to focus on our natural resources management. We have a lot of natural resources in Africa and in Nigeria in general. So we want to be sure we're able, we have the tools and the capability to manage these resources effectively and efficiently for the development of our people. Of course, you cannot be happy if you don't have good defense and security. So that is key. And we want to contribute also to the studying of the earth and its environment. We are part of the world, we are part of the earth, so that has to be part of our, our agenda. Of course, space communications, communication applications is also a key uh, ingredient. Education and training, as part of developing this capacity, you cannot do without the education and training of your people. Also, just to let you know that we really value international cooperation, that's why we still have it. And anything we do, we want to be sure that we cooperate with the rest of the world. So the objective then of the policy is in five steps. One, basic space science and technology, remote sensing, satellite metrology, ICT, defense and security. So in terms of looking for partnership, these are the areas that you can cooperate with us or you can work with us or assist us and we, we too would like to cooperate with you and work with you. So now let's quickly look at the roadmap. That is the, pr the plan of implementation of the policy. You can have a policy if you don't have any plan, how are you going to achieve those policies or the aims and objectives of a policy? You ain't going nowhere. Now, as part of the policy, the first thing we did is to establish an agency which is in charge of the implementation of the, of the policy and the program. So here we have, of course, the gate to our new campus. Here is our administrative building. And if you look at it, well, you may not be able to see it in this picture. We built it to look like a satellite with the spring, with the wind spread like the antenna. And of course, the other one too, we built it to look like the, um, the head. So here is our grand station for our communication satellites. So uh, the agency came to being in 1999. Now, as our plan, our program of execution is as follows. The four items at the top in white are things we have achieved so far. And of course, we are talking today about these two. So in 2003, we launched our first ever satellite, which is an art observation satellite, which we call Nigerian Sat-1. Now, Sat-1 was designed for five years, and it's still in orbit. It's still performing very well. We are still happy with the quality of data we are getting from it. Now, in 2007, we launched our communication satellite, which, as some of you may know, um, is uh, after 18 months in, in orbit, is malfunctioning, mal malfunctioning a little bit, so it has to be deorbited. But we are planning to replace that satellite by the end of this year. Now, the start of today's story is Sat 2 and Sat X. So that is where we are in our program. Now, going forward, we have the desire and the goal of having a sa satellite. We want to have made in Nigeria satellite by the year, hopefully, 2018. Not only just made in Nigeria, we also have the desire to launch satellites in Nigeria, on Nigerian soil. That is, made in Nigeria, launch in Nigeria. This is part of our indigenization program. Um, down the road, we hope we'll be able to, just like any other society, be able to have a lot of spin-offs 
from acquiring knowledge and skills, know-how from all these other programs. And eventually, we want to be able to be part of the developed world where we have large-scale commercialization of space technology, know-how, applications. So now, let's look at the highlights of the N2 and N3 projects. The first question people ask, both internally and externally, is why build SAT 2? In fact, before even build SAT 2, when we built SAT 1, we had the question both internally and externally. Why is Nigeria going to space? With all the social challenges we have in the country, can't the money be spent something else, somewhere else on the roads, infrastructure, and all that? But those questions, thank God, has been answered, whether adequately or not, we are not too sure, but every now we still get the question. But today I'm just going to talk about why bills are two. One, we are happy, like I mentioned earlier, that SAT-1 is still in orbit, eight years, even though it was designed for five years. Not only that it's still functioning, we've, we were able to learn a lot from that project. The data is still being used for different research. In fact, we are lucky, uh, I don't know whether I should say lucky, Nigerian SAT-1 has to happen to be the first satellite when Hurricane Katrina happened that was able to provide image of that area. So in a way, we are happy that at least we are there, we are able to contribute to international um, affairs. So because of that success, we say, okay, we need to continue. SAT-1 is supposed to have been out of usefulness, but it's still there. So we want to replace SAT-1. SAT-1 is a medium resolution uh, satellite, 32 meters. So in order to continue that, we said, okay, let's, go, let's have a replacement. Not only that, from my experience with SAT-1 and applications of satellite data and new knowledge and skills in that area, we found there is high demand for high-resolution images in Nigeria, in Africa, and not just Africa, the rest of the world, as many of you who are professionals much be, know better than me, are aware that there is real need for high-resolution images for different applications today. For, is it precision farming, is it uh, urban planning, road construction, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one of the key reasons why we say, okay, we must build SAT 2. Now, we also know that our knowledge so far is not yet enough. Our capacity and efficiency in, this, in, in the space technology is not where it needs to be. So we want to learn more. We want to develop our resources. We want to develop our people and the expertise. So, what other way can we do this other than actually getting our hands dirty, hands on uh, development? So we want to develop that. That's why it's okay. SAT2 will give us opportunity to increase the knowledge of our people, bring more people, more scientists, young scientists in, in particular, into the game of space technology. Now, more importantly, though, we want to increase our capacity and ability to use space applications for our social development. We have so many social challenges, environmental challenges. We should have a better way to do this other than by using space applications. We want to increase our efficiency and our proficiency in that area. So those are the motivations for us going to SAT 2. So based on those motivations, we did this assessment, which now led to these par parameters for the mission. One, we, based on what we did st our study, we know we want high resolution images, so 2.5 panchromatic. We would love to have multispectra, but of course we don't have the kind of money that some of you have, so we set it with 2.5 panchromatic. Then five meters, of course, with red, green, blue, and infrared. We want to continue with SAT-1. That's why we have the 32 meter payload also on the new satellite. Uh, we also want to have our own new grand station in Abuja. Abuja is our headquarters for some of you that may not know. So this one now has to come with uh, S and expand. Then lastly, we want it to last a little longer than five years that SAT-1 was designed for. So now we went for seven years. Although we know we could have asked for something more, but we are satisfied with seven years. Now with the requirement having defined, now we look around. So we saw SSTL. They are good partners. So the contract was awarded to SSTL in 2006, rather, uh, for the purpose of designing, building, and launching of a high-resolution spacecraft, as well as all the associated ground segments infrastructure. 
Now, another key component, if you remember what I said about one of our major focus is education, training, and all that. So another major part of the contract is capacity building. Um, for the capacity building, we want our engineers and scientists to be able to build a model with the supervision and support of SSTL. Now, the, the engineers that were selected, about 26 of them, to go for both academic training, which will lead to master's degree, a word of master's degree, as well as hands-on training in building, in designing, building um, of uh, satellites. So we are really happy. But in nutshell, sure, though, the, the primary focus of SAT 2 is the applications for natural resource management, environment, thematic applications. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not a technical person, and plus we are not as much concerned in terms of our main focus for applications about all the other technical stuff here about uh, wheel space. All we care about that the satellite must be very agile, it must be rugged, it must be able to stay in orbit for as long as it's designed. But we are really more concerned about the real mission, which is the resolution, the images, the uh, medium resolution as well as the high resolution images. Now, Nigeria SAT 2 is designed to have, remember, 2.5 as well as 5.5. So I believe this very high resolution image also does the both, 2.5 as well as the 5, five meters. Why this one continues with a 32 meter um, Nigeria SAT? But the other stuff, if you have questions, particularly those of you who are engineers or interested in designing or learning, what are the technical specifications of the craft itself? Like I said, Andy is here and other engineers from SSTL. All right. Here is the model. No, here is the actual craft itself after it was built. Um, of course, we are proud to put uh, an agency. Oops, excuse me. Uh, I didn't want to go that fast yet. So this is the actual satellite after the final build, before getting ready for shipment. All right. Oops, I'm sick. All right. Okay. Now here are some other technical parameters of the for the spacecraft. Of course, it's one satellite with one fixed ground station in Abuja. Is at uh, after it was launched, was is put at 700 kilometers above Earth. Um, seven years. Of course, it was launched at uh, Yasni of, um, on uh, Dinapa. It has several imaging modes, which is our main concern, single, strip, single and strip scenes, area scenes, which you see hopefully the video of that, because we believe that video and pictures are really say much more than anything I can, I can explain. Uh, the quality it's a 5 to 10 percent radiometric calibration with 30 to 40 G location accuracy. We're also happy about this part, the fact that we can have uh, 150, about 150 raw images and 450 compressed images, as well as we are able, to, we can store about 100 images. So, just to show you a little clip of the, this is a simulation of the, this is not the actual SAT2. But this is just a simulation of that. All right. Again, just to explain, just show you what the parameters of the, the, the capabilities rather of the of, of the uh, of this air, of the spacecraft. Um, it has two different set of reaction ways, which you saw a little bit of that in the in the picture I showed you earlier. But what concerns us more than Anything is the fact that it's able to perform row, yaw, and page maneuvers within specified limits of time and angle. And that is very important to us. Also, we can image away from as, as far as 1,000 kilometers away from a ground station, almost in real time. That is key for us. Um, this one is also key for us, allow imaging around the ground station to be quickly tasked, imaged, and downloaded. Those are very key parameters for us. Now here is the, I don't know whether you can, yeah. You can see the antenna, hopefully we, okay. 
this ant two antenna are supposed to be rotating, showing you that. All right. Can we go to this one to actually? I'm sure people who are technically oriented will be more interested in that. All right. Moving along. So here are the typical modes of collection. You have the single mode, which hopefully we'll be able to see the animation of that. You have the strip imaging mode, the stereo. We are really happy about this one, as well as this one too, the area imaging. I mean, this really shows that the satellite is really capable of doing a whole lot of things uh, that will give us really good images of what to, to satisfy our applications. Okay. This is the single mode. Oh, okay. I guess it's, it's enough we can move on. Now, this is the strip mode. All right. Well, I don't know if I have to, I need to explain this because I think the video already showed so, so this. All right. Now, this is stereo mode, which we are really happy about, too. Where the, the satellite is coming this way, it takes an image, then it goes this way, look back and take another one of the same target. Okay. Just to explain, okay, the same thing you saw in the video is just to show that, okay, we are here at first, we're coming down, took the image while it was here of this target, and then it comes around, shh, look back again, take image of the same so that you have a stereo image. All right. Uh, this is also is a very wonderful mode, the area mode where you can have three by three scenes all put together. All right. Now, this is also another animation of what we've just, the video of what you've just seen, trying to show how the area imaging mode works. All right. Now, the typical mission timeline is this, we believe, once because this is where I am more particularly interested in as a distributor that, okay, how long will it take for me to get image to you as my customer? So from the moment you make your request, well, I'll let you know, okay, you make your request, I will send the request to the mission control who will now do the tasking, do the imaging for me, download, it gets back to the mission control. Now here, we, there is a little picture here that we, uh, it's not put here. There are two paths that we can go here. One, it can go to the data management department who make sure that the quality and everything is there and then we put and get back to the distributor. Or it can go to space application department where they may have to either integrate the image into some other solutions or applications so, or do some other um, added value services. Now, after that, it now goes through a distribution company or agency back to the user. To me, this is a very key slide in the whole thing. All right. So typical collection, this one of the other very beautiful thing about this satellite, you have the store and forward. We are OK. You are imaging. Then when you get to our, over our ground station, then you, that's when you download. Or near real time, if you are close to our ground station, as you are imaging, 
they can be downloading simultaneously, almost simultaneously. So this is very, this gives us the ability to meet customer's need very quickly. All right, this is, I don't know whether we need to even see this clip, it's just to show the store and forward. All right. All right, near real time. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Now, quickly then, having shown you all the different modes, what are the data types that, or data products you can expect from us? Here are the list. Now, one thing we didn't put here, beside this, is thematic mappings applications, value-added products. We can supply you with all these, but we can also supply you with added value products. Um, you can contract us to do special projects for you based on our data. Here's a picture of a grand station. N1, that's a legacy grand station, uh, the one that we use for N1, for SAT1, and this is a new one, 7.2 uh, meter antenna that serves both for N2 and NX. Here are the engineers, of course, putting the final build on the satellite. I think in one of, the, one of them there is, uh, I'm sure Andy is somewhere in the moving around, telling everybody what to do. All right. Here is uh, part of the training of our engineers during uh, their stay in UK in Surrey. I already mentioned that uh, some, one of, oops, sorry, sorry about that, I didn't mean to go that fast. Okay. I already mentioned one of the key components of the know-how technology transfer is the acquisition of knowledge, particularly getting a degree, as well as the hands-on training. These two are very key, and we are happy. Our engineers are already, they already came back to Nigeria, and they are doing wonderful. Here's another picture of them in the classroom. Now, that is about SAT2. SAT now, SATX, has a special mission. The mission, like I said earlier, is for training purposes. So our engineer is supposed to be a model with the support and supervision of our partners, SSTL. Uh, of course, what, to, we are to be, what they built is an art observation satellite uh, with the system consisting of these segments here. Um, one imaging payload, which is 22 meter uh, resolution, of course, with the ground station uh, in, um, in Abuja, as well as our people to have the know-how for operations. And this, they have been able to prove that, yes, they indeed learned and they did acquire the skill. Now, here is the, a little bit about technical illustration of where they are supposed, to, what, how things are supposed to work with NX. So our legacy grand station can still work for NX, but on S-band for both, for both data and telemetry and all the control. But our new grand station, N2, has for, for data, we use both X and S-band. For telemetry, we use the S-band. I don't know whether we need to go into details of this, other than for me to point out that one good thing about this satellite to the NX is also the fact that it's, it's unsynchronous also, which we are, we are really glad about that. It has a red, green, and near infrared. It's 22 meter. This is very good too for us. And here are the engineers, just to, to give them credit, that indeed, that indeed they built it. It wasn't a phantom, it wasn't virtual built. They actually did real people doing real thing. 
few more of them here. These are engineers, I think that's what you did right there. More of them. I'll just quickly run through this. Now, this is the real story here, the launch of N2 and NX. What I've been talking about is just a quick background overview of how we got to where we are. Of course, this is the final, taking or lifting it up to, the, to be taken to the launch site. Uh, our ground station was ready, prime everybody was eager to go, and the satellite itself is saying, I'm waiting, take me here. Of course, this uh, when everything was ready, the final photograph at the launch site, here is a Professor Borofis, who was the original DG that started the project. We give him a lot of credit for, for his, his vision. Uh, here is a permanent sec current permanent secretary who, from the agency that supervises Federal Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, here is a current uh, DG, Dr. Esso Mohammed. Uh, here is a former Minister of Science and Tech, who was also at the beginning of this project. I think he was he, him, and uh, the prof, Dr. Uh, Professor Borofi signed, actually signed the contract. Launch site, check out. At Yasme, Russia, where the actual launch took place. Final loading up. Of course, you can, I think the pictures really speak for itself. And final team photograph. All right. The already loaded in the, uh, in the capsule, and with the crocodile coming to shut off, <laughs> pick it up. And of course, now on its way to the launch site. So this is the actual launch. This is the real thing here now. All right. Of course, you know, at that moment, everybody was equally excited as well as a little... <laughs> They say, okay, we hope, let's cross our finger, we hope everything goes well. And we are happy that things went well. So the launch actually took place on the 17th of August at Napa, on the Napa vehicle from Yasmin, in Russia. Now, what is the current status of N2 and X? Yes, it's in orbit. So, so far, so good. It's in the desired orbit as we're talking now. All such systems have been tested, and we are happy with the result we are getting. We have received some test images, and they look really beautiful. We, we, we really like them. We are proud of the job our engineers and SSTL our partners have done. Um, currently, calibrations are still going on, and until which is part of the commissioning. Once the commission is complete, uh, from my side of the aisle and Dr. Shaba here, the application, we are ready for the commercial distribution of the nice, beautiful image that will be coming out of the, the, the satellites. So that is the current status. So the key thing now, what is going on right now, is this one, calibration, So which is decommissioning. All right. Let's quickly look at the samples of images from, this is the first, I believe this is the first image from N2, Mombasa, Kenya. So. We really love this, this image. We, we think it's, it's, it quite says a lot. Even though it's not the final quality that you see when all calibration have been done, but at least to just get this kind of image within 10 days of this satellite still going through calibration and all that make us feel really good about what our people have done. Uh, this is, I believe, uh, Salt Lake City. Okay. 2.5, of course, punch happened. Just want to bring up a little that center here just to show you. I mean, to us, this is very wonderful. Robin Island here, taken September 28th, uh, Los Angeles. 
the ins let me go back a little bit. We just try to bring this area, the city safe, uh, that you see right here, just to expand it a little bit. And that's the picture, the image you are seeing here, the picture. Cape Town, where we are. We are glad to have this image for this occasion in particular. So you want to see the airport, I mean the, the stadium. Yeah, there's the image of uh, the stadium in Cape Town here. I uh, was to also see, we want to try to see where we are now. We are current, well, unfortunately, there's a little bit of cloud covering us here. So you may not really see yourself. Okay. So we are somewhere under the cloud here. We apologize for that. Okay. Now, this image, these are engineers here, are waiting anxiously, looking, waiting for the first image from NX. And my engineers were so excited, so looking at the screen closely, okay, what is going to come, what is going to come, what is going to look like? So when they got this, they were really excited, and we too were happy, happy for them. So just to bring up the, the image, this is the first image within three days, and that's one key thing about this this uh, um, satellite. Now, within three days of being in orbit, we were able to get this quality. All right. So, what is next? Here is the crux of the whole story. What are we doing next? One, we are waiting anxiously. We are ready. The infrastructure in place for commercial distribution of the data. Now. The commercial distribution of data is done, or will be done, in two, with two approaches. One, GeoApps Limited is the commercial division of NASDAQ. It's one responsible for the commercial distribution and commercialization of any products from NASDAQ. So that is my responsibility for, uh, for now, on behalf of NASDAQ. The second aspect of that is we need commercial partners that will help us in the distribution of the data worldwide. We already have one, DMCI. DMCI is a partner for Nigerians. Uh, I think most of us know DMCI. So the Disaster Monitoring Constellation, which is made up of other satellite operators. So we already have an agreement with them to distribute for us, but we are still looking for more partners and distributors, particularly with focus on Africa. We are looking for agencies and companies that have the infrastructure, the well-established market channels the resources to be able to do large-scale data processing. So if you happen to know companies and agencies like that, or if you and that business, please, we'd like to talk to you afterwards. If not today, if you're not able to get to, together with us today, um, our email and our phone will be ready to share this with you. We can communicate later after, the, after this. All right, thank you for that. Um, we also are looking for universities, NGOs, international organizations to join us in the widespread application utilization of the data. We don't want to just have the data and just keep it in our archive. No, that's not useful for us. The more people that use our data, the better off we will be. We want to contribute to development of this technology. And the only way we can do that is by partnering with other people who are in the business, bringing new people into the, uh, into the game. This slide is a little dated. It summarizes where we are on our roadmap. Our goal, of course, this is where we are right now, the launch of SAT 2 and SAT X. Now, like I said, this graph is a little dated, but of course, there's nothing sacrosanct about any roadmap. Any smart person we routinely review what they are doing, what they have achieved in their roadmap, and make changes when necessary. So, of course, we're going to be making changes to this. Uh, for example, at the time we put this together, we were looking at AstroSAR, but we know that may not be true. We are still going to do SAR um, image launching. Uh, we already have, we want to have our first indigenous, um, excuse me, we did this in 2003, which we are okay with. No, excuse me, this is the one we did in 2003. This is at X, which we have just accomplished. It's supposed to have been in 2009, but nevertheless, we are happy that we're still able to achieve it. Uh, the other thing we are looking forward to, now, this one, we are not 
I don't want to uh, dwell too much on it. But just to let you know that we do have a roadmap which will be changing from time to time. We are looking for you partner, people to partner with us in achieving our mission. But despite the fact that this will change, our goal and our mission, our purposes remain the same. Acquisition of the capability in the digitalization of the capability to participate in the space technology. So what is the conclusion in general? One, we believe we are on the path to achieving our roadmap. We believe the launch of N2 and NX is a major achievement and is particularly for the realization of the AMS African um, Resource Management Consolidation Systems. And it's a pointer, a key pointer that, you know what, the goals of ARMS are achievable. N2 and NX are the first satellites in the constellation. Now, other people are joining us, they'll be coming on board, launching more satellites, so um, we're really happy about that. Thirdly, we believe that what we have done is a very, very positive steps in Af not just Nigeria alone, but in Africa's quest to participate as equal partners in the development of and application of space technology. Lastly, this is a manifestation or a proof that, you know what, when people come together across borders, across continents, positive, positive things will come out of it. So, thank you for your time. Now, do we have time for... Ooh. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. What annual budget is NASP given? Well, that's a very good question. Um, it varies from year to year and from administration to administration, but there is no fixed budget. But every year we go to the assembly to the uh, politicians and policymakers and say, please, we need so, so much for this project. And they look at and they prioritize projects for us. So we don't have a fixed amount of budget. Wow, it's, it's, it's difficult for me to say because one, I'm not in the, in the loop on the, on the budget side. Mine is just to go and sell data and bring money back. So sorry, I couldn't really address that properly. Okay, any other question? I think maybe time for one more. But like I said, if you have technical questions about applications, about the engineering aspect, uh, the gentleman in front here will be around for a little while. Uh, the SST stand is uh, behind, uh, towards to the end of the exhibition booth. All right. Once again, I thank you. Really appreciate your coming, especially this last day and very early in the morning for you to have woken up and make the time to come here. Thank you so much. <laughs>